I'm a 2016 graduate from the Human Development and Psychology Program. Are there any fellow HDPers in the room? No, it's so lonely, maybe one. Well, hello. So I'm also the founder of Relationship. And I founded Relationship at the Harvard Innovation Lab this summer. And the reason I founded Relationship is the same reason I came to Harvard. And that is because I've worked with hundreds of survivors of relationship and sexual violence. And I've also had many friends and family members who've been directly affected by relationship and sexual violence, by sexual bullying, sexual assault, etc. And what I had observed is that the impact is devastating. And that our reactions as a society, as educators, isn't enough. So a lot of you probably know that we're beginning to have this conversation at the university level. This is just kind of an emerging thing, but it's on this campaign. And a lot of this is happening because of the Office of Civil Rights and the federal government is making us talk about it. We also probably know that we're not really talking about it in middle and high school. And part of the reason I think that is, is it's hard to name. So we have sexual harassment, we have sexual bullying, we have cyberbullying, we have sexual assault, we have relationship violence. Sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's verbal, sometimes it's physical. And there isn't one umbrella term that discusses or names all these behaviors. And Title IX talks about it, so what we've heard so far is what can happen to you and how you might um, better prepare yourself for that. But in middle and high school, and even at the upper education level, we don't really have a way to measure this, right? We're not really looking at it. So a couple statistics you might be familiar with is that one out of three, um, or one out of four teenage girls in a relationship is a victim of physical, verbal, or emotional abuse. We also know that individuals aged 12 to 19, which is our middle and high school college students, experience the highest rates of sexual assault and stalking out of the entire U.S. population. We also know that most violent behavior begins when you're around 12 to 18 years old. And many of us are figuring out our identities, figuring out our relationships, learning all this stuff at that young age. But we're not having these conversations if we have them until we get to college. So I'm here urging you to consider this in your education at HGSC, and in your role as educators. So, I'd love to get to know a little bit more about you. What I know about you so far is that you probably came to HGSC to change the world. You probably didn't come here to get rich and famous. If you did, I'm really sorry to let you know that. May or may not happen. <laughs> so, you probably want to do good. I'd like to get to know a little more. So, who here plans on being a teacher when they graduate in a classroom? Who here plans on being school leadership or administration? Who here would like to work with adults? Some fun apps? Great. So we all have an ability to make a difference on this issue. Furthermore, who here has been in a romantic relationship or plans to in the future? Everybody, right? <laughs> who here is a parent or you know, plans to be a parent, has a child, has a friend? So the good news on this issue is even though it's pervasive and affects everyone regardless of their gender, expression, their sexual orientation, their racial background, socioeconomic background, that we all can do something. We can all move the meter a little further. And I also want to give you a little more data on how schools are responding. So in a survey of school counselors, who generally are considered the experts in the school on sexual relationship violence, like the person you'd send that kid to, over 80% did not feel equipped to handle these issues. So even our counselors don't know about this. And I want to ask, with a big proud show of hands, who here has received a professional training on how to prevent these issues in your schools or in your workplace? So I count maybe like 15, right? Who here knows somebody who's experienced these problems in their life? Probably everybody. So the disconnect between how many feel prepared and have training and how many know somebody who's been affected is really great. So I want to encourage you all to take ownership of this issue and not just in how we respond. So when someone comes to us, we want to say, tell me more, I'm here for you. And not just how we handle perpetrators or allegations, but creating an entire culture and environment where nobody is motivated to perpetrate these acts. Nobody is motivated to have sexual side bullying. No one's motivated to harass others. So that's really looking at the systemic and cultural level. And I want to encourage you during your very, very precious and limited time here at HGSC, to advance your knowledge. So maybe you already know about this, this is your old hat, this is your passion. Great, there are ways for you to develop further. Maybe you're brand new to this, this is your first training. Welcome, there are spaces for you. So Micah talked about OSAPR, Bridget here is with Title IX. Um, we have a lot of local activities and events here in the Boston, Cambridge area. And I want to formally invite you to Harvard's first ever groundbreaking symposium called, name it. 
name it, face it, end it. It's going to be happening in about two and a half weeks here in Asquith and moving over to Gutman. And it'll be a whole different um, panel and different sessions on relationship and sexual violence. Rachel will be talking about sex ed with a renowned scholar in sex ed and ethics. Jamarcus will be coming. Maybe we'll have Jamarcus saying something. Yeah. Michael will be speaking. So it'll be a really great way to build your skills. Um, let's see if there's anything else. But uh, I also just want to encourage you to just wherever you are to, to own this and to really believe that relationship and sexual violence is not inevitable and that as humans we are ultimately peace seeking and that this can be something of the past. So I want to invite you in that process. So this is the end of the formal presentation. I'd like to invite Rachel and the 